Hey guys, what's up? There's a new animation tool out from the guys from Savage, which came out on November 22nd, and it looks pretty promising. So it's called Procreate Dreams, and you're able to create 2D animations. And the way you create those animations is not quite, uh, I guess, as traditional as you think, but it's really easy, and there is a lot of intuitive things on gestures. And if you're familiar with Procreate, the previous program, to this one, I think that it'll feel very natural and you guys will like this one. So it's out now and it's available in the App Store. So Savage Interactive has made this available for a one-time price of $19.99. So let's just take a quick look at the app right now and we'll get into some more features of the app in later videos. But for now, let's just jump in and see what this is all about. Okay, so here we are inside of the application and let's just take a look at this main area here and they call this area the theater. So this is where you keep all your movies and you can do a bunch of things here. I'm gonna go over it real quickly with you guys. But uh, before we do that, let's just take a look at some of the animations that you can create and some of the examples that they provided so you can get inspired and check out what you can do with Procreate Dreams. Okay, that's pretty cool. Let's just jump back out. And what I'm doing here is um, where you see the title into the future, there are like four squares, a large one, and then like two vertical squares and then a small one below it. If you just tap that, it'll bring you back into the theater area where all your movies are. And let's just check out this other one called The Breach. I'm gonna hit play. All right, pretty cool stuff. I'm gonna let you check out the last one on your own. In the top right hand corner, if you hit the plus symbol over here, you'll bring up the option to create a new movie. And this is interesting because to the right of this, you'll see a bunch of dots. Like it's kind of like a carousel, like a vertical carousel. And you can scroll up or down depending on what you're looking at to see which movie you can create. So the very first one is called 4K widescreen. Um, so this is where you can make the most out of your film. So this is like a popular film format and you can scroll up or down depending on the carousel you have on the right. And in this one, we have the 4K ultra widescreen. So this is if you're creating something for a little bit more of a cinematic purpose, I guess. And then you have this social uh, 4K new movie as well, which is, I guess, is for, you know, they say great for sharing and so forth. And the other one's like a square. So you have different variations that you have and different screens that you can start with. So these are like some preset defaults that come right out of the box for you. This one took me a while to figure out. So if you were to hit the 4K button and you click on it, you'll see that you know you have options to make different screen size resolutions. So let's say we're going with the screen size uh, preset, which is actually the one that's decided to fill your whole entire screen. So whatever the resolution of your iPad is, uh, this version or this preset will fill that screen. However, you can change them. So you can make it 2K and you see that that little you know pink highlighted 2K will change, it'll be HD and you can do 720p. So if you're familiar with the old version of Procreate or actually Procreate itself, um, you'll note that uh, they have a thing in this one, Dreams, called Tracks, but Tracks is kind of like simulator layers. So depending on the resolution, like whatever level you choose here, you're gonna be limited to the amount of tracks that you can have or produce. And that's, I think, based on you know the flexibility of the device. So depending on what iPad you have, what version, I think this is gonna be where you're gonna have a limitation around the types of tracks that you create. And then additionally over to the top right here, there's this kebab menu like this, three little dots to the top right. And you can change here your frames per second. So if you click on that frames per second arrow, you'll see that you have frame by frame, which is kind of nice. So you can do frame by frame animation. You have different frames per seconds for anime. And you can choose, you know, cinema, television, PAL, NT, SC. So at any given time, you can just hit the reset to defaults button and that will reset everything to back to where it was. So the initial state was 24 frames per second and the duration also, you can change that to any amount of duration that you want. So 30 seconds may be pretty long for you. Maybe you only want like six seconds or maybe you're going full out here and you want an hour. So that's a pretty long animation. But at any given time, you can change these back to whatever by just hitting reset defaults. You open this back up again, it's back to 30 seconds and your frame rate is back to 24. So let's cancel this for now. Another quick tip is I was kind of messing around with this. If you hit select, you'll have the option to create folders, delete, or duplicate. So by touching on the movies, I was able to select them. So I selected these movies. And then, you know, I was just messing around and I hit delete. And then I deleted the actual example movies and they were gone. 
So I was like, oh man, there's no more movies in here. And I lost the examples. But quick tip, if you actually hit procreate dreams, another window will pop up and it'll say getting started, the help center, and then it'll ask you to reset the examples. So if you just click this button here, reset the examples, your examples will reset. But there is a little caveat to that. When it does reset, you'll have to actually restart the application. So find where your Procreate application is, Procreate Dreams application, and then just start that up again, and then all your examples will be back. So I kind of panicked there for a minute, but in case you ever do that, that's how you get back there. Uh, to the left, you'll see that there's like a tab area, like a little section that comes over here. And this is interesting because this is where you have like files that are on your iPad. Maybe you have files uh, that are on your iCloud. Perhaps you've saved some assets somewhere else. This is where you'll be able to see those or access that. While we're also here, let's hit select one more time and let's select these items here. And what we'll do is create a new folder and we can just type in here and we can call them examples and we'll hit done. And what it does is it just takes your examples and it places them inside this new folder. As you can see here by the subset with the arrow, it says examples, and then you can go back out and you can clean up your workspace. So you can move the examples there out of the way and then you can have all your other sets or whatever you're working on. So it's a nice way to stay organized and you know set up your scenes or your movies in the way you want. And then at any given time, you can jump back here and you can click on your example. So while we're in the examples folder, if you actually click on some of the examples and you hold it down, you'll see that it gives you a bunch of other options. So you can rename them, duplicate, share, copy to iCloud, drive, or delete. So the program looks very simple in itself. Like it, it tries to make it like not busy with a lot of uh, UI things, but there's tons of customization, tons of things that you can do. They're very subtle about where they are. So just note that if you were to click on a movie inside the theater area, you can rename, duplicate, share, or copy to iCloud. So depending on what you're doing, if you want to stay really organized, you can select items and you can create a bunch of nested folders or however your project hierarchy is structured. Um, and then you can just like do things like that. Now, the interesting thing was I haven't found a way actually how to bring them back up a level. So like, you know, what if I want to bring this folder, you know, to the topmost level, which is here. So if you guys find a way to do that, or anyone knows how to do that right now, because the program is still fairly early and there's still, um, you know, a little bit of light documentation around it, uh, let me know. All right, for those of you who are following along, maybe you don't want this structure right here with the folders and then the nested folders within the folder, right? So let's just reset this to back to what it was. So in Procreate, there was a thing called stacks and you could stack your artwork or your galleries on top of each other. In this instance, if I go into here and I try to say like, bring this out by selecting it and in Procreate, you could drag this up to say examples and you'd be able to move it out of this folder up a directory. But for now, it doesn't seem to work that way. So what I will do is I will close this. I will go back to the topmost level, which is the theater where all your movies would be. I'm gonna select this folder and I'm gonna delete it. And since we know how to reset this application, we can just hit Procreate Dreams and we can reset our examples. All right, so this just puts us back to where we started. So let's hit the plus symbol one more time. So let's select plus and we're gonna say widescreen and we're gonna hit empty. So we're gonna create a new empty project. In this case, it's gonna be called Dream One. So in later videos, we're gonna cover the icons to the right, the timeline, and a bunch of other features inside of this interface. But for now, we're just gonna tap Dream One. And you'll also see here, we have the option to do some more things that we did inside of the theater. So there's multiple ways to do the same thing inside of Procreate Dream. So if we tap Properties, you'll see that you can also edit the frames per second here like we did in the theater. You can also change the duration. You can change the resolution by picking a specific width and height. And if you tap made by, you'll also be able to give the author a name. And if you tap the user icon, you'll also be able to change that profile image to whatever you want. Then you also have stage settings, which we'll talk about later. You'll be able to turn on onion skinning. We have timeline options and we can share. So depending on how you wanna export this file, there's quick export options. And then we have preferences, which we'll get into in a later video. One last thing I wanna show you guys before this video ends is how to import your assets from Procreate. So depending on the version of iOS you're on, you can tap the screen and you will see a kebab button at the very top. And if you tap that, it'll give you the option to open or add another window, right? So you have Dreams here on top and beneath it, you have Procreate. So I'm gonna grab a piece of artwork from Procreate. I'm just gonna click on it and hold it. I'm gonna drag it over until I touch dreams and you'll see that there's this plus icon. I'm gonna let go 
and then I'm going to tap into dreams and you'll see that it actually is importing your artwork. Once the art is imported, I'm going to hit the top kebab button and I'm going to enter full screen. So we have our art imported from Procreate. And what I'm doing here is I'm just pinching and zooming. So I'm using my index finger and my thumb and I'm pinching and zooming into the art. And we'll get into all that in later videos. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.